Hi guys, my name is Eunice and I will be presenting my uh, production and acoustic analysis of two na native Korean speakers. So there's E and M. Um, e is a 22 year old female, native language is Korean but bilingual in English and she acquired English knowledge at the age of eight. While M is a 50 year old female, her native language is Korean with intermediate fluency in English and she acquired English knowledge at the age of 35. So uh, they both recorded I like to drink coffee. So this is E speech recording. I like to drink coffee. And this is her um, transcription of I like to drink coffee. And we'll talk more about the uh, non-native sounds that are native to English but not native to Korean such as er and in coffee and we'll see how that compares how E's speech compares to M later on. So this is E's spectrogram of the sentence I like to drink coffee and um, you can really see these segments here but we're going to focus on one thing one specific word drink so drink, drink, and this is a spectrogram for the word within the sentence. And um, in the first segment, you can see that there is pre-voicing. So um, it is a voice D with an aspiration. This whole aperiodic noise here that's a fricative um, was determined to be an aspiration of D. So drink, so ch. And um, I found that there is no audible K in um, within this spectrogram um, because of the co-articulation with coffee. So drink coffee, not drink coffee. And um, in the spectrogram, we can also see the velar pinch for ng, and we'll get more on that later. So this is a production analysis of um, er, which want which I want to focus on. But overall, um, I, I segmented each and every speech sound, uh, each and every sound in the word drink. So this is d. So that pre voicing for d, and then the aspiration, and then the er, r, r, e, mm. So all together, drink. And um, so how, you, how e uh, produced er was um, she placed a tongue tip slightly behind the alveolar ridge. Um, so not exactly at the alveolar ridge, but a little slightly farther back. And it is an approximate, so the airflow um, goes through the sides of the tongue. There's nothing really obstructing the airflow um, as there would be in fricatives or stops, where stops is a complete stoppage of airflow and fricatives are some stoppage of airflow. And this is an acoustic analysis of just the pre-voicing d. So um, you hear that little voicing for the d, and it's um, pre-voiced, so negative 0 0.5, 0 0.05 seconds of, of VOT, and then the burst. So it is really um, a voiceless high frequency noise indicating that it is a fricative. And this is the er. Um, so the F1 was 448 hertz, F2 is 1946 hertz, and F3 is 2470 hertz. And um, this er r, um, is erotic clearly shown on the spectrogram by the decrease in F3, you see that little um, depression there um, where it goes, where it comes back up into the vowel. And uh, this is for I, dre, I. So the F1 for I was 459 hertz, F2 200, 2,284 hertz and 2,892 hertz. It has a uh, pretty low F1 and a pretty high F2. 
um, but it is not as high as E would be, um, which we'll see in comparison to M's uh, drink later. So, mm, mm. so we see on the spectrogram that there's some nasal murmuring. Um, so you see a lot more like white rather than the uh, black and the gray. And you see the velar pinch because mm, is a uh, velar nasal. Um, the F2 kind of rises up to meet F3, which is the velar pinch. So this is M speech recording. I like a drink coffee. I like drink coffee. Copy. So um, she was actually instructed to just copy. Um, I like to drink coffee, but in a very conversational um, setting, she just omitted two. So I like drink coffee is what she came up with. And um, you see a couple of differences here from E right, right off the bat that um, she does not have a clear er. She, in, in fact, um, replaced that with a light L, L. And then she also replaced with a P, copy, instead of coffee. So again, this is M spectrogram of the entire sentence. I like a drink coffee. I like drink coffee. Copy. So this is her drink. 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 So there's very actually. Um, I found that there was very little voicing for D, and it was almost like a T by itself, um, which you'll hear later on. And there was an insertion of a short vowel right next to the uh, uh, burst, and it was a very short. Uh, 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 um, which we'll uh, separately hear in a bit. And this highlighted portion is the uh, l, the tri, li, li is, um, um, is shown on the highlighted portion. I determined it to be a light L instead of a rhotic, and we'll get more on that um, with the analysis later. And um, you can also see her velar pinch for the mm. So this is a, a production analysis for her L. Um, her tongue tip touched the alveolar ridge, so it's not exactly a little farther back than it was for um, E. Um, and it is a lateral proximate, so there is airflow through the sides of the tongue and nothing obstructing it. And we see that it's, um, and production-wise, the L for the light L um, that she used was less curved than the dark L. So like L in lemon versus L in lord, um, it's less curved. And um, so we'll hear each segmented sound. So this is her D, it is very short. E, li, li, e, mm. So dring, dring, dring. So specifically for the D, t, see, um, it hears, it sounds exactly like a very, very short T. Um, it almost sounds aspirated, but um, I just felt, I just thought that it was still very slightly voiced um, and with a little bit of aspiration. I just said that this had a positive 0.03 seconds of VOT and, um, and I thought that it could be the result of um, background noise while recording. And this is the uh, 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 and this had an F1 of 312 Hertz F2 of 2,180 hertz and F3 of 3,025 hertz. So it has a pretty low F1 and a high F2. Um, but we'll see in a bit that it's different from the E, which has a very low F1 and a very high F2. So this is her L, 
F1 is 288 hertz and F2 is 2200 hertz and F3 is 2991 hertz. Overall, F3 uh, did not really move. Um, so again, showing that it is not erotic. She did not say brr, she said ooh instead. So it's a light L due to the rather uniform formants and there's little to no changes from transition. Um, from the transition from the U as well as transition to E. Um, so if it was a dark L, then the F2 would have been, uh, would have shown a little more movement to show more like white gaps in between the formants. Le. And this is the E again. So it has the lowest F1 out of all the vowels. Um, so, F1 is 280 hertz, F2 is 2,389 hertz, so very high F2, and F3 is 2,990 hertz. So again, F3 really didn't move that much, um, or not at all really. And then this is the mm. uh, There's a velar pin shown by the increase in F2 and meeting up with the F3. And there's a very slight nasal murmur, um, hers less so than E's, which we'll see in a side-by-side -side comparison later. So um, we see here E's drink, drink versus M's drink. 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 So we see, um, especially in the highlighted portions, just how different these two are in the spectrogram, spectrogram wise, as well as waveform wise. Um, so you really see that um, F3 dropping for the rhotic in E's um, spectrogram, while M really just has a flat F3 throughout the word. And so we'll look again at the er, r, r, in E and L in M. And the, diff the two differences here for um, in this word that I found interesting was the two vowels. So um, the E for drink in E and the E in drink in M was, um, so these are the formant values. So the F1 for E was 459 hertz, which is uh, comparatively very high to M's F1 in E of um, 280 hertz. And then again, F2 for E is lower than uh, the F2 of the vowel in M, M's drink. And so, uh, overall, E's R in drink was the, was the target English R, while M's R was more lateral, sounding more like a, a more like a light L. And um, this is because Korean does not have a distinction between R and L, which makes it difficult for M to perceive the difference and articulate drink at a conversational as at a conversational level without being specifically instructed to be aware of her speech. Um, on in E's case, um, she, she was taught English at a very young age, uh, while M uh, started learning English at the age of 35. So her accent is very much present. Um, so M's L1, Korean, significantly affected her English L2 speech with um, substitutions of non-native sounds such as R and um, F and insertion of native vowels in unfamiliar consonant clusters. So um, she actually added U or a uh in non-native consonant clusters um, because Korean actually does not allow consonant clusters. It's always CV or CVC. Drink was an interesting word to study because um, it's actually C, C, V, C, C. Um, so I was just very uh, amused. And also again, despite being told to say, I like to drink coffee, M omitted to because um, she was unfamiliar with the prepositions 
Um, in, during conversational speech, this is her habit. She will actually not say prepositions or, or just like kind of try to get around having to use them. Um, she also doesn't really use articles much, which is pretty common for uh, non-native English speakers. Um, so for M, I would say that there is a negative transfer of L1 on L2 um, that interferes with L2 production of sound as well as syntax. And uh, another interesting thing that I want to note for this presentation was that if she were to say drink um, by herself, if M were to say drink by herself, it would be turinku, um, which is a word that Koreans say pretty often in um, Korean speech, as well as kopi. We don't say coffee, we say kopi, um, which is an unaspirated P. Um, so M was most likely just like content with the Koreanized version of the English words, um, which results in turinku um, by itself. And um, she would just drop the U um, for a phrase like, I like to drink coffee. It would be more like, I like to drink kopi. Um, but there are some um, non-native English speakers who have native, who are native speakers in Korean who will say, I like to drink coffee, like that. Um, and um, we also saw earlier that she substituted P for F and U for A, uh, uh for A. So it's not coffee, it's coffee. And I'd like to end this uh, presentation with the quote that I found in uh, chapter six of the textbook. Take care of the sense and the sounds will take care of themselves. And I found this quote to be interesting and relatable because um, if we as speech therapists just really teach them how to articulate and like teach them how to like notice the small perceptual uh, differences, um, they, the sounds will take care of themselves. Thank you.